The pound managed to rally against the dollar after the result of the referendum on Scottish independence favoured Scotland to stay in the UK. However, the currency pair suffered from the recent joining of the UK in the international coalition to fight against Islamic State. We are going to discuss about the pound and also about other forex currency pairs with Jamal Ahmad, Chief Technical Analyst, FXTM. Jamal, be very welcome. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Naomi. Thank you for the nice introduction. So how do you see the pound? Um, so this, the GBP USD has been by far the most interesting currency pair to watch over the last month. And there's been lots of unexpected volatility. For example, like you correctly said, the Scottish referendum Many within the United Kingdom, and I think throughout the financial markets, didn't expect the Scottish referendum to be so close. Myself, I didn't either. So we saw a lot of flus uh, a lot of investors become flustered by the yes votes, mm -hmm. gaining so much unexpected momentum, and the pound it um, declined from 1.66 to as low as 1.60 within a couple of days. But as you're right, since Scotland voted to stay within the United Kingdom, the pound rallied and it came back to within the area where the vote began to be priced into the market. But yes, now that the UK Parliament has voted last night to join this international coalition to be part of this conflict uh, that's escalated in the Middle East, we've seen some pound weakness within the last day. How would it last or do you expect that it just stabilize and then the power continue it resume, resumes its rally i think political uncertainty it's hard to forecast in the markets but what i would do is i would take the same example as what we saw from the greenback the mm -hmm. usd last week when barack obama um, announced that the us had participated in airstrikes in syria on monday evening we saw a pullback and some profit taken in the dollar but by the time the us session had started the, the same day the, the dollar had regained its losses. I think in order for this conflict to, joy, to um, encourage some substantial weakness in the currency pairs, I think it may need troops to be deployed into the Middle East. Mm -hmm, I see. For the time that, um, while airstrikes are taking place, I think the losses could be quite contained. That's very interesting. Um, anyway, most analysts favor uh, US dollar strength for the coming months. What do you expect for the dollar? I think the US, the Federal Reserve ended their quantitative easing program mm -hmm. within a few weeks. That's a massive sign that the United States, uh, the Federal Reserve, are stepping towards normalizing monetary policy. So this is, investors have seen this as a indication that we're getting closer to the Federal Reserve raising rates and beginning to normalize the economy, so to speak. But myself, I'm not so sure the Federal Reserve are going to be in a hurry to raise interest rates. I'm one of the analysts who is expecting it to happen in the uh, final part of 2015. I think that the Federal Reserve were very patient to tape a quantitative easing. They took their time. And I also think until the, um, they're going to take their time to raise rates. What I'm expecting from the F Federal Reserve is after ending QE, they will monitor each piece of economic data that comes through until at least the end of this year. And then in the beginning of 2015, see how the US economic data is handling, uh, is coping without quantitative easing now that it's fully concluded. And then I think talks will elevate about a potential interest rate rise. That some analysts favor July. Actually, a recent um, report said that the market consensus is 52 position for a rise in July, mm -hmm. while the other 84 is position for a rise in late December. What do you think? I, personally, I'm with the latter. I mm -hmm. think it's going to be later than anticipated. The Federal Reserve were under no, they were not hurried to taper the quantitative easing program. I think they delayed it more than once. And most were expecting the Federal Reserve to begin tapering QE last September. They ended up tapering QE in December uh, 2013, and I think it's going to be the same with the US interest rate rise. They're going to be very careful to make sure they do it at the exact right time, and they're not going to be hurried into a rate rise. Let's move to Europe yeah. and to the European Central Bank policies, which is going to start these um, expansive measures and this expansive policy yeah. over the next months. What do you expect? Do you think that the bank is going to wait until uh, seeing how LTRO works and also ABS before launching any measure of quantitative easing yeah. itself? 
I think quantitative easing, it's very much, it's a last resort measure for a central bank. And I think the ECB should also be using QE as a last resort. What I'm expecting from the ECB and what it looks like they're trying to do is encourage banks to start lending again. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to boost inflation and they want to boost economic growth. They want to stimulate the economy. Exactly. So they want to encourage lending. So what I think the ECB would, are likely to do is continue to raise negative deposit rates. Mm -hmm. The ECB were the very first central bank to introduce this new measure. Basically what it means, negative deposit rates, is that banks will be charged by the ECB for leaving money within their bank. I see. I so see. I think that the ECB are likely to continue raising rates, negative deposit rates. How far could it go? I could see the potential for the European Central Bank to keep raising until at least 0.5%. And if they're not seeing any more lending happen mm -hmm. by then, then I think it's possibly time to talk about introducing quantitative mm, I easing. See, I see. But for now, like you said, the ECB, they've got negative deposit rates, low interest rates. They keep cutting their interest rates, sorry. They're introducing ABS. They've got the LTROs. I think that they've got so many playing cards out at the moment. They need to find which measure might work for them. If they introduce QE right now... Uh, yeah, they, they couldn't see if the previous yes, measures exactly. have worked. Yes, yeah, exactly. They need I to see. give some time towards what they already have. Encourage banks to lend. Try and see if the lower, the weaker Euro USD, which we've seen decline from 1.40... How far do you see the decline in the Euro dollar? That, how far could it go? Okay, so my estimate for September for the Euro dollar from in May from back in May, so it was 1.28. This week it dropped to 1.26. I think that investor attraction towards the USD is going to carry on continuing until the Federal Reserve decision where they officially announce QE is over. And I think with greenback strength, in collaboration with the weaker mm -hmm. EU sentiment that we still have, I think that by the middle of October, we could be at 1.25. Maybe even 1.25. 1. 1. We may even be 1.24. Oh, that's a long run. Yeah, it, and a I, long decline. But some analysts think that the fair value is something close to 1.20. Do you think that is that correct? If the the key to the euro dollar right now is the greenback continuing to be consistent mm -hmm. and for investors to continue having hope in the. US economy. Because as we saw this time last year, uh, sorry, as the of 2014, when the US economy went through its poor winter period, investors began to purchase the Euro USD, and we've seen the EU data suffer as a result. And even Mario Draghi has said the higher uh, Euro USD exchange rate has not benefited the EU inflation levels. So I think what we need is to continue to see a gradual weakness in the euro dollar mm -hmm. and then see if the EU data picks up. But there is potential for it to end the year at 1.20. There okay. is potential, but it has to be greenback strength as well. Okay, okay. So a euro dollar at 1.25 by the middle of October and a high potential of having our currency per around 1.20 by the end of the year. Thank you very much, Jamel, for Thank being with us. It's been a high pleasure. Thank you very much.